a very warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us today good afternoon good afternoon jitender good afternoon everyone who is actually attending and participating in this very interesting discussions today and i am really really happy and thanks to cio gurukul and cio and leader team for making this possible today and yes it's end of the year and ai has been in the center stage of discussions new discussions not only discussions so many launches and so many other areas actually in 2023 i think everything we talked about it was ai so i think let's start the discussion and happy to share my experiences our challenges and what road map actually we are in this thank you thank you mahendra so as the world's largest television measurement size uh, i think i would uh, first like to understand that uh, how what are the foundational principles that uh, guide bark india in its role so maybe if you can give an overview and then we can have a uh, conversation uh, on, on for the when yeah thanks in the for the benefit of everyone bark india stands for broadcast audience research council it's a joint industry body and our mandate is to provide tv audience measurement for the indian market and those are the channels listed with the mib and registered with us actually we release the ratings every thursday 11 o'clock i'm sure you might have heard certain other words we say the ratings but certain words like trp uh, channel ranking channel ratings audience insights i think these are the areas when we talk about and indian tv market when we talk about i think we talk about currency though we release the data so we are data measurement company and our core business is all about data quality data when we talk about right and this data is act this data acts as a as currency in the market so which means advertisers agencies and broadcasters all use this data for different different purposes so for example broadcasters use this data for the purpose of understanding how the content behavior is what are the consumer tension points or what content content is working how they can engage more uh, audiences on their platforms or in the channels when it comes to advertisers definitely they are looking forward to their products to reach out to the right audiences in the market right and they take the help of agencies so they can devise the right communication and strategies around these contents and they can reach out to the people and definitely that can when when if it in their sales revenue and not only that actually brand kind of kpis right for agencies the bigger job is how actually they can plan better so their media deployment around it actually how it can happen if you see that the last year report indian advertisement through the television is around 318 billion inr plus so it's a huge responsibility that your data is act as a currency which people use for planning and execution as well and monitoring as well so that's where we are and yes you rightly said and we are very proud and actually we feel really immense responsible when we say uh, we are the largest tv uh, panel based tv measurement on the planet so we are close to 57000 plus household iot devices installed from where we collect close to from 220000 plus people's data signals and when we actually use the universe study actually to extrapolate into to release that so it's a huge responsibility when we talk about the four foundation or the four <laughs> principles for bark uh, we are a very simple and very uh, defined company and what we think about the four principles for us are acting with integrity the kind of business our is so first principle is acting with integrity second is collaborating consistently delivering excellence and fourth is cherishing the spirit of life every week we release the data it's not something that we are doing one project one at a time for us every week it starts with the new response to go out every week right so first thing is integrity the data has to be with the quality and we understand our responsibility second is collaborate why we are having close to 57000 how household across the country basis on the design where our iot devices are placed from where we receive signals we collect those data continuously in the close to real time basis right then collaborating on the field of, on the ground collaborating across different teams is immense responsibility without this actually this kind of job is not possible and we feel really really blessed that even we have seen covid now now ai has come into the place we have never missed touch wood our data release at 11 o'clock every thursday now that requires every day you need to excel in your business in your technology in your frameworks and everything right and once you do so 
I'm sure actually we want to cherish the spirit of life. So I think when the positivity is there, we can make these things possible. And that's where the BAC stands for. And that's where I, as a CIO for BAC India, has a responsibility to ensure that we are at the backbone, enable everybody, every stakeholder around us to ensure they are doing their job very well. We are giving them the right cutting edge technology, which is coming for tom- coming to actually ensure that we are relevant for tomorrow. And we do our job smoothly. Though there will be challenges, there will be concerns, and there will be new questions will be posed every day. We can have, if not, we don't have the answers. At least we are moving in the right path to get those answers tomorrow. So I think that's where the responsibilities are. So yeah, that's the brief about my role and 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 the Bark India, what we do. Now, Jitinder, I'm all in your dispersal. You can ask the questions based on the areas you want to select in. And that's our engagement session from here on. Thank you very much, Mahindraji, for giving an overview. And uh, you rightly said the uh, you you touched very uh, pertinent points, the intelligence part and making uh, data useful in a more effective manner. So I um, uh, would like to understand you have, you have an extensive background in uh, uh, in shaping up data for your uh, for Bark as well as in some of your previous organizations. So uh, in today's context, where uh, data is growing by leaps and bounds for every organization, how do you see how to integrate it uh, with AI to make your overall data strategy more intelligent, more effective, and uh, to deliver new, uh, not only exceptional user experiences, but also to uh, come up with new and uh, uh, innovating products, in- innovative products and services? I think after cloud, I think AI has happened the fantastic thing to us. And let me acknowledge, we the technology people, let people think that technological curve towards evolution is very steep. Some people will say exponential. Or let's say, I I can remember some of the discussions has been happened in the past. I think some of the very veteran in the industry in the US, I think, from Coca-Cola or somebody was saying, if the current kind of technological evolution has been possible in previous century, then time from having the first test of flying in the sky for the humankind, and then actually having going to the moon or possibly we are exploring space, if the same innovation or the technology evolution has been happened there, possibly we will already have the kind of colony on the Mars. So I think the kind of speed the evolution is happening, that's where. But having said so, you very well said that data actually is flowing like air now, you cannot say where the data is not there. Right now we are speaking that is one of the data points, right? I think to engage in the corporate side of it and when you are responsible for your organization, your people, your products, your clients and everybody, I think there has to be some sensibility towards understanding and using the data in a very right fashion. I think first of all, the first step towards is the consensus has to be there, and then the collaborative approach has to be there, where technology alone cannot take a decision. You go with their business partners, you go with your clients, and just see what demands are there for your AI use case in the market, right? And second, then you consider in your ecosystem whether you have the right data sets and the right data pointers available for you or not. I'm sure actually with the help of RNN and, and LRUs and other, other other algorithms and the AI ML actually has become so cognitive into it, it can immediately adjust the data sets, which are the training and test data sets, so the output, and then actually it comes back to the input cycle again based on the output. So fast, you have to be really, really wise at what input data set learning you are providing to your model. So I think the first premise is you must consider what is your use case? What input you are providing, so what output actually you are looking forward to? And in that, what data pointers, what kind of historical intervention and something is required? And once you are sure on that, then I think it's required a small pilot to run through to understand what kind of insights or what kind of outcomes are coming from this model for your business use case. And then you present with the complete, you can say, uh, responsibility. When you are presenting the data, be responsible because sometimes what happens, data is such a powerful tool actually. You can present the way possibly the audience wants to hear. Right? 
sometime actually you can present certain figures and percentage certain times actually you can come out with averages and sometimes it's being very small example it's not about the ai and something but actually somebody can feel really really mesmerized yeah this is what very positive but when you are really responsible towards your outcomes and responsible to your ai and data journey be responsible present the right facts and if those facts and those outcomes are really really reasonable and they are actually really required to change the kind of market scenarios and the kind of business outcomes from there on to define the scale define your complete go live cycle and i'm sure ai can do tremendous marvels in your ai journey and we have seen in certain areas we have where we have been really really beneficial and we can simply say where the human actually can generate this thing so actually we can become the mother of invention for the ai so actually we are the people in the first three steps we discussed we have envisaged something and we have delivered right now this kid which is the ai model kid actually can do wonders and actually it can not only actually optimize certain business outcomes not only actually it can open up new avenues for your business dimensions it can help you reduce costs as well it can actually help you see new dimensions of data possibly were not possible to yesterday so i think this is the first step towards when you start the beginning of your ai journey so uh, you rightly said so uh, uh, it's basically identifying right use cases is uh, extremely extremely critical uh, i also wanted to understand with so much focus on uh, predict, predictive analytics uh, across industry uh, uh, what specific use cases do you envision where predictive analytics uh, through ai can drive better decision making it would be it would be really helpful if you can also share some use cases and some practical tips as well oh sure so i think let let us take two areas into it in my industry right now if you want i can go back in my past experiences as well where we have done for some other industries around bfsi or retail those are the predictive model if you think through uh predictive models are there for ages right predicting or actually putting the forecasting of the seasonality that what kind of a demand can we demand forecasting can be one thing that is there for ages right diwali had just passed so many people in the retail study must have done definitely the demand forecasting for the same ecom players are there actually bring their volumes if they have done different different other predictive models actually to bring in the right sellers the right products and the right margins into it but let's say in my media industry in the city where actually our responsibility for the measurement i cannot talk about for the whole uh, the whole spectrum of the media industry and something because my responsibility is quite focused right now for the measurement and something but when i look at from the neutral point of view not just from my stand point of view from my own nature but i'm saying mahendra pai there is a technology person actually i think this industry actually can be tremendously beneficial from the ai evolution though one watch out i will use the word we will not discuss much deep fake so i will pass on that one side possibility is that with the wrong usage of ai deep fake can become the normal i will park now my statement possibility may be if we will not use the data very very responsible ways possibility is that fake can become the reality so i will park there but i will say something from defining the right script having the right concept for what content people can love it what are the wow moment in the content what are the kind of tailoring around it how you can make the same content available in multiple languages then finally actually how the people are adopting around it then once people are watching it can actually you have the hashtags can you have the subscripts can you have the kind of a uh, warnings somewhere the saturated warnings can you have somewhere the content blurring and so many other areas are there you don't have really really have to go into the production side of it but the ai can take care of in the run time that's the power of ai so how we are using it for our own analysis for our own answering and query making methods to actually do we double sure on certain things to validate our algorithms and something we do something which is called content tagging so close to 600 channels which are related with the mib guidelines through the satellite diet to homes and something we observe close to 100 channels about their content profiling like what kind of things are going on what kind of anchors are there what kind of what kind of content is there what kind of uh, engagement is there and then putting into the kind of line to understand whether the human behavior actually analyzing this or not 
So you can think it's a petabytes of data, but AI gives you the power where the human actually cannot tag this thing and code this thing in this thing. We can code in the real time. There will be errors, but the best part with the AI is if the right intervention you put and you say, this is correct, this is not correct, this is required to elevate or something and right correct it, it can do it. And this gives another data points for you to feed into some different models to understand what works, what doesn't work. Though we are not in the business, but actually to understand next time when we are having this kind of information, whether this was the right moment or not, actually this gives further secondary data analysis for us. Now this is one part, now we have done that. Now the second things can come up with you. I'm sure actually every platform is coming with this. We are using, I wouldn't want to use some of the BI tools or something, but having said so earlier BI tools were more like information to visualization if you am not wrong, right? But I used to say this thing close to 10 years back. The power is not about information to visualization or information to information. The power is about information to insights. Can, can any platform can come in which can say this data point is all about this insight. So not only just give you the answer for why, but actually after why, how actually you can read it and translate and actually do the course correction, that's where the power is. And if you see nowadays, I'm just taking one example, we are having the Power BI as well. So Microsoft is really, really big now on the AI side of it. Now I'm, I'm saying about another Salesforce BI platform, Tableau is there. They have the Einstein platform. And the good thing is that they have two things which we are using right now into it. One is stories. And second is using the NLP based question answering. So we have enabled basis on the data lake, using the data lake, we have created the different dictionaries and those NLP tagging or the codes actually have been provided to the end users who are not so technical, technical. Now using those codes and those stories, actually they can ask the questions or they can put the questions, they can go to the history, they can create one story versus second story in comparison. And then this platform actually can give you the kind of readability aspect of it. So you are not just only seeing the chart, but you are knowing actually what's happening around. And those derivations actually make end users life a lot easier. And think of it, if those kind of business users are there who knows the industry very well, for them possibly earlier it may be used to take, let's say six hours or, or sometime a day to understand certain kind of phenomena. Now actually they can do within hours or something. So I think that's the power of data and the platform together. But having said so, think of it, if not the right data ingested, then the story is completely different. So that's where I think that's one area of it. So we said how actually you can link into the content and the current data and the content data as well actually when you merge together, it gives a powerful platform actually to actually have some more understanding around it. So that's one use case. I think other use cases are also there, but maybe I think when you probe the question beyond the data side of it, possibly I will answer those as well. So I think data journey earlier, which was something like create a warehouse or data lake, and create dashboards, refresh the dashboards, give insights, or put the benchmark if any kind of outliers are there, highlight them. I think now in the 2023, when we are ending on a very happy note, I think the story has gone one or two steps, not one or two steps, but 10 steps ahead. Now people can have the causality, they can have the root cause, and possibly the preventive or the correction methods also have been defined. Possibly in 2024, if we can give the right feedback, this system actually can take action actually for do the right uh, resolution for those things as well in certain areas, not all areas, but in certain areas. So I'm quite excited around those. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mahindra. So uh, uh, in what ways do you think AI can optimize operational uh, processes related to data management? And uh, if you can share some specific examples or initiatives where AI has improved operational efficiencies in data related workflows, for you as an organization? Okay, so our field management process is ISO 9001 certified. And uh, like I said, it's a huge responsibility to manage 57,000 plus households across the country. And these are certain countries or certain rural areas are far deeper rural areas, right? Come to think of it, if we are working on the previous based rule-based engines where we say, if this problem is there, then possibly this person can visit this household for the maintenance or something, right? That is one area I'm just giving hypothetical. Or let's say it's as good as like any servicing industry somewhere, let's say 
some air condition actually has gone bad, but let's say it's in the far rural area into it, how the task will be assigned. But for us, it's a day-to-day -day job. We have to ensure that if we are these devices, which we say barometers and something, they're functioning in the right condition, right? So what we do, we have created some kind of a, so this is like you use the right word, predictive analysis. So in the back, let's say two years back or something, we started working on certain models where six, seven years of data has been fed. That this kind of alerts or signal or warning things are coming into this thing. What chances are this device can go bad? And in this kind of the, the device goes bad or the device is not performing up to the requirement, what kind of interventions are required? And which intervention actually has cured this problem? So now we have the learnings for the six, seven years of learning, right? When we throw this information from the systems, so we're working on this area, then the system actually can predict in advance the chances of that this device actually can go wrong in the next two days or five days or, or 10 days. Now you see, they have the power actually 10 days in advance to understand. And then actually it is again, not only just the causality and what can go wrong, but basis on the past experience, if the, the machine knows or the platform knows now, these X and I or the platform can take itself rather than sending any human intervention to make it correct. Though most of us actually here in the light humor, I'm saying sometimes the simplest answer to it is restart, right? Restart can be wonderful. But having said so, whether the restart will work or not, or the device will get into the shutdown state, that's a very cautious call, right? So in those areas, the machine learns, and we are working on this area where the machine can do at least 40% of the maintenance job itself or the platform. Now, the second part comes in. Now, think of it, let's say, I don't know, we can take the example of Mumbai only, let's say. Let's say there are five places, some feet on a street guy has to travel. Let's say these five streets, five places are, let's say, fort area, where I'm sitting, let's say, the Farel area, Let's say somebody has to go Pawai and somebody has to go New Mumbai. And let's say this person is coming from Thane. And one place is Thane. He has to go and visit and do this activity in the today's day. Now, nature of the problem, how much time it will take actually to cure these things, and what optimum travel path the person actually can follow. Basis on that. So not only the nearest place, but actually the return path as well because this person has to go back to Thane. We have put basis on the last six, seven years of the cases and the mechanism into it. So then the system, which we are using on the Salesforce cloud though, the system actually is collaborating and actually optimizing in such a way that this time can be reduced. So not only five tasks, possibility is that if in the same day, six tasks can be achieved. So we are talking about some efficiency of around 18% around those areas. So this is the power of actually the right data ingestion, using the right intervention and putting into for the right outcome into it. So this is where, where we have a journey is. The possibility is that once this full flash platform will be, so the system is working, we are testing the models in something, possibly in the first half of the year, we will have this kind of optimization already in the place. So what actually it gives, that means you can do 20% more work with the same. So the theme actually for the industry can be, or for us can be, or what we are adopting is do more with less. So that is one area. Second area is, I think another area is around security areas. I think security areas, we cannot actually see the security now in the standalone silos of the applications or the data centers or the clouds. I think we are ever, we were never this much of connected. We were never this much of actually uh, surrounded with the devices and connected devices. I think if you just see three years back versus today, I think the data penetration, the speed, the throughput actually has gone phenomenal. I think when we are talking about the different communication channels, I'm not talking about any platforms or something which actually can say, you can take your mobile and some self services can happen on this mobile as well. Some links pops up. Now, we are also having the end users. We are also having the data centers. We are having the clouds, these devices and everything. The whole endpoint, the whole endpoint game. I think that's where actually we have different strategy altogether. One way we are seeing the application systems or the ecosystem, and one, one side we are seeing the user ecosystem. And that's where we are working on certain, these alarms, like I said in the previous only, how actually we can separate and we can say false alarm versus positive alarms. And then possibly we can group the ticketing, we can have the kind of more robust root causes in something we can identify. Certain things definitely we can do ourselves, 
certain learnings actually we can apply. But I think in the area of AI, the biggest term I want to use is the collaboration. There are people in the outside in the market in possibly similar industries or the similar field. They are doing wonderful jobs. If you collaborate with them, possibility is that your cycle from envisaging the use case to the live actually can cut short. You can use a lot. I think that is the area Jatin, that I want to highlight possibly we can we can definitely work on. Sure, sir. You talked about cybersecurity. In fact, one of uh, the attendees, Mr. Dhananjay Prankar, <clears throat> he, he, he wanted, uh, if you can explain more around the use cases in cybersecurity space and compliance domain, he has uh, requested for the same. If you can just throw some more light on uh, the specific use cases in cybersecurity and compliance, that would be great. Yeah, sure. So cybersecurity infosec, or we can say multiple areas are there. It's a very vast area. And and uh, thanks for your question, Ananja. I think that you have touched upon two different areas altogether. Compliance is a different area and cybersecurity is a different area. I think now compliance or the audits, we cannot take as a kind of a regular interval approach anymore. That is what our learning is. And that's what my team also keep on saying now. I think now the time is actually where we can use something like always on kind of a benchmark audits, benchmark uh, stress test with different tools and techniques. And there are players in the market actually who are saying we can very well do it. They can assess your frameworks and they can say whether you are below the benchmark or you are up in the benchmark. Now these benchmarks actually no more can be for the year. I think it's ever evolving. I think we have to be every day actually when we wake up. So it is. there's no time actually the job is like nine to six or nine to or 10 to six kind of a job. I think it's around the clock 24 by seven. So very well actually, I think everybody talks about this statement is there. I think from ages now, zero trust. There is no denial actually, we have to go with the zero trust kind of a framework All every other organization. But now, there are two areas I want to touch upon in my experience is actually we have seen something, we have observed something. One area is I think uh, XDR with the SOC and the SIM solutions. I think they are, they are must. And the kind of learning they bring from their own systems, their own universal cloud system where the threat actually has been observed, let's say some part of the world, how actually they have nullified or what learning has come so the policies or the so the security things actually can move in the system immediately. I think that is the need of the hour. Second thing is right now when we discuss about this, this is the one second big area which I see. I don't feel right now any solution is there or maybe my limited knowledge is there. I am and the PIM solution right now they are in the silos. So, so when I say I am, it's the question actually I am and the PIM actually gives us in a circuit but they don't talk to each other. I think they need to talk to each other. If we can somehow bring in this learning from these two platforms together and the areas actually I have talked about, I think that can that can really, really help us a lot. And then actually it can give us the kind of some bit of more confidence that yes, we are more secure than yesterday. But having said, so like I said, security is the one domain where you have to be really up on the toes every day, every minute. Sometimes you have to be lucky as well. I think hackers outside in the market or ha hackers in the, you know, the kind of industry, I think they just want one very simple loose movement of ours where actually we can find the vulnerability and they can actually access it. So I think it's a big challenge for us. I think each one of us, I think that's where AI can be really, really huge to help us. Where the learnings, where the model elasticity, where the model models fragility, I think can be tested in the real time across the globe and planet. And that's why I think lots, lots of vendors actually are claiming they're putting up this kind of solutions, which can help us. So this is one area around the AI side of it. But having said so, let's say if our devices are our own internal devices, like we have our meters and something, we must ensure that not just for certification, not just for getting some kind of signature that yes, we have done the audit or something, but we should always ask the tough questions to ourselves. Are we really, really safe? And whatever is required to do the right assessment, I think we should keep on doing that thing. That can only make us safe, secure, and maybe ready for better tomorrow. I think I have read somewhere, uh, 
close to a quarterback or something, I think from dark source results, dark trace research or something, post chat GPT, the number of actually threats have gone up by 135%. What does it mean? You really, really don't know whether this threat is real or this is a genuine person or the genuine query. I think that's where I think more evolution is required. I think platforms like Microsoft or Salesforce, they're, they're, they're fencing themselves. I think that gives a kind of safety. But having said so, that also makes us some kind of one more question to, I think, experts around your side uh, with the kind of question is there. Will we completely rely on these kind of wall gardens in this area as well? Where one universe of there is from Microsoft, one universe is there from Google, one from Salesforce or Oracle or, or other vendors and partners, right? I think these ecosystems would talk to each other. That's where the power of collaborative data can improvise us, not only in the data journey, but our business outcomes as well. You rightly said, Mahindraji, thank you. The power of collaborative data needs to be refined in a more effective way. So uh, 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 in terms of unstructured data, uh, a lot of organizations face uh, you know, big challenges around unstructured data. And uh, in fact, in my interaction with many of the technology leaders, that's a, that's a concern where they uh, want to leverage AI. So how do you see AI playing a significant role in extracting value from it? And uh, what challenges do you foresee in integrating AI with unstructured data? And how can uh, CIOs and IT leaders can effectively plan to overcome that? I, I will be honest with you, Jitinder, in the, to, the, to the forum that, yeah, Unstructured data has been a kind of a big question mark a few years back. Right now in the industry, I am working with the organization I am working. Right now, our most of the data is not unstructured in nature, where we can say something like data is coming from any of the sources where we cannot define, right? I use the word something from my content tagging, where the video data is there, right? Video data actually we use for emotions, video data we use for identifying the right characters, doing the tracing, uh, sub, 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 some messages and something. But having said so, right now the power is such, it's not the day actually where you cannot classify certain things. In the industry, in the organization, if you really want to use unstructured data in the usage for your own benefit, then you have to really define the intent while you're capturing that unstructured data. I will be really, really serious on this. Certain time you can collect petabytes of data, but of no use. Why? Why the data collection intent was missing completely from there. But rather I will say somebody has collected few terabytes of data or few GB or gigabytes of data, but the right intent or the right question or the right problem statement was there and that data can be a lot meaningful. So that's where possibly I, I'm sure you guys will be agreeing to me Certain time, actually, we can snatch data from so many different sources and the model is not giving the outcome. Or certain time, our reports are not giving out. Forget about the models and, and our, our, the other data science people actually are finding what data should be considered or not considered. But certain time, since I'm with the market research kind of a company where we are the data research company, right? And we are working with the panel list. If you rightly identify the right segment of your audiences or the customers, and you go with the right intended questions, I'm telling you those questions and answers can give you much more meaningful outcomes than possibly you are trying to do the kind of a data cleaning or data munging in the oceans of data. So I'm saying that's where actually I started my discussion with you. You identify the right use case. Keep your consciousness very true that we have to really stick towards the relevance and the realistic with the data. I think that's where the foundation is. But having said so, if you are training your data models and data sets with, with unstructured data, which can be voice, which can, voice is one dimensional, yeah. Tonality and the language can be another aspect. Uh, your videos, I think a lot sophisticated use case and models has come. You start small, value it further, value it further, and I'm, I'm sure you can get a success. When, we, when I can say we, we are identifying and managing so many channels and their content actually, which is continuously streaming to us and actually we can identify, I'm sure you guys can do it. There are there are focused companies, there are focused organizations, focused platforms are there actually which can help. But having said so, I will be honest with you as well in this fashion that a lot of noise is there on the social media around how you can create pictures, how you can create videos, how you can create PPTs. But ask yourself, 
is this the right use case you want to test your product? I will be honest with you, if I have to create right PPT, it's it looks fancy actually to go in some of the platforms and create the PPT. But your story of your presentation is what people want to listen, not of the AI platform. So certain time actually we have to really, really put a differentiator. What is fancy? What is the business need? I think that's where actually the, a lot of story defined. And then finally, your data strategy is important. Since the compute is cheap, data storage is cheap, trust me, outcomes are very costly. Because a lot of energy, a lot of collaboration goes into it. And you don't want your teams to fail. So I will say, you store the right information, you process the right information, process the right use cases, and I'm sure we all will be successful and we will always cheer for each other, actually, that that's what we have done. There's no harm in failure, but having said so, identify. And one more aspect is there. I think talent is also very important. In the AI side, what I'm facing, right, uh, or what I'm seeing it, a lot of people talk about so many things in the resumes. A lot of people talk about so many things in the social media, on LinkedIn pages, on Twitter, or, or so many different papers, blogs and something. But trust me, if somebody has really, really worked upon on something, I think what I have started in certain interviews, though we will say we are using from so long as well, ask the right pertaining use case kind of questions and then actually you can know what the depth of knowledge is there. Any good people actually who knows the data, he always oath for the data sanity. And trust me around that, we can do a lot better. And now you touched upon a very the uh, relevant uh, concern while finding right use cases, like you said, is extremely important. A lot of time uh, organizations, they, uh, they keep on experimenting, but of course, uh, we need to learn, uh, you know, uh, through fail fast uh, approach. Talent is another uh, critical area uh, where uh, a lot of technology leaders, they face challenges. So uh, would, you, would you be able to highlight uh, you briefly uh, touched upon having a right talent strategy, but would you be able to guide uh, our participants how to devise a robust uh, talent strategy to retain AI talent and of course find right and suitable uh, candidates in a uh, in a market which is already uh, facing very limited talent pool and most of the companies are eyeing for the same talent. Yeah. This this question I don't know how to answer. I will be <laughs> I will be really really uh, honest with you. To, to you and to the whole forum uh, with all my humble respect to each and everybody in the industry I don't know but there is nothing there is no uh, magic stick or magic wand actually which say what is talent retention what I have seen somebody just gets a salary hike I don't know about the role or something they just leave you invest a lot of time for them actually to to learn to grow to understand the concept and suddenly actually you say they are not there and with the organizations be it you Jitinder in the forum in the industry and everybody there is a limit to actually salary rises in some way so i don't know i think we only have created our own the kind of uh, this uh what we can say the spider net actually and we are catching to it i think somewhere actually the responsibility goes to the whole organization not only organization but the whole industry itself where actually they can come together and say we don't want to fall into the trap of this kind of a mirage where where this can happen. I think somewhere, I think for retention tool, I, I tell to my HRs, if any candidate is saying actually that he is having one offer in hand, I don't want to interview him. I think that is the first step actually I can take. This step is after, I think, this, but I'm saying I will come to the on-ground return. But actually, if any candidate is having one offer in his hand, I would simply respect the kind of energy other organizations might have taken, selecting the right resume, interviewing a candidate, and possibly giving the complete motivation and onboarding kind of things. I don't want Richard to interview. I think if, if we all take this responsibility together, I think we can solve at least 50% of the problem. Next 50% of the problem is different. The next 50% of the problem is, I think we require to have a kind of a playground with us. It's like raising our own kids. Sometimes actually we can be tough with them, but a lot of time actually we have to be always supportive. We can be tough, but I think we, they require always support. 
certain time not only just guidance i'm not sure actually the guidance is the word they are looking forward to i think so much of knowledge is available they need support if we can tell them i'm i'm there with you you can fail but actually the definition of failure has to be defined do some philosophical we can say we are not here actually to fund your another startup kind of thinking that's not but if the right business use case is there and you think actually you can do that thing i'm ready to actually take and accept your failures so don't do kind of a unknown ex- experiments which are not really really good for the organization or for the industry if you want to learn those possibly you can happily do it in your personal space but for organization if the right use cases are defined right intended defined stand with them support with them with the right technology and platform uh, i think research budget is something which can help actually i have some research budget and we do diligent with the kind of group so we have created something called a review board so we say solution review board is one area where some few people are there from the kind of cft which is the cross functional teams so let's say one idea is there jatinder has come up with one brilliant idea idea is brilliant but it is applicable in our own industry in our own organization in our working environment if answer is yes for all these three then why not let's try it and the cft where people come from different groups business group is there technology group is there user group is there then take the mutual responsibility practice that use case and if this use case is giving the results why not scale up adopt it and go out in the market so i think that's where we are doing it so yes in this all stakeholders take joint responsibilities people are informed if the success is there success is together if the failure is there no one's failure we tried i think i think that attitude helps and i think i'm happy actually there are fantastic kids outside sitting here they are doing some fantastic job that's a very valid input there is no guidance but of course uh, you need to give them uh, enough support confidence and support uh, we have another question from mr uh, rahul notial he basically uh, has asked uh, uh, how to scale ai applications in your data analytics infrastructure to handle increasing data volumes and uh, if you could help uh, with some considerations for ensuring how ai driven analytics can remain effective as data grows when we talk about growing data volumes i'm sure uh, data can grow in two different fashions altogether in the ai side either you are injecting more and more consumers or more and more input nodes into it that's a or b you the input nodes are the same or you can say that we are actually we are defining the outcomes with the what is the propensity what are the chances of this thing or the, what is the outcome of this so these are the input nodes for me or actually you are increasing further more your source nodes the source nodes can be data sources right now you are using 100 data points to actually analyze certain things which is further in the ai definitions the data set uh, variables or the data set uh, uh, definitions actually are increasing from let's say 10000 different permutations and combinations so that's it 12000 something that is that is the only two possibilities are there i think for the first point the business is growing because your input nodes are growing let's say previously you were discussing with let's say 10 million subscribers now you're going for 11 and 12 that's a definite business need i think you can have your scale journey you can grow i think either the horizontal or vertical or possible multi tenancy or multi instances actually can help so you can define this instance can support this much another instance can go for this much and then the learning actually can come together in one funnel and becomes further input but when you are saying data sources are actually increasing where actually you are onboarding one more data source for example you are taking now the data sources from 10 20 different things now actually you are saying macro economy or something you want to further ingest from each and every rural aspects of it and so and so on i am taking a hypothetical answer to you i think this way actually the wise decision can be can actually you take the input of this data and see what lift it is bringing in your model let's suppose you are already at the good lift of let's say your model efficiency is 94% or let's say 92 to 94% or something and this another input data set is giving you only 0.5% 90.5 your standard error actually is not going anywhere 0.001% or something so look into your standard error which is not making any much difference to you you are solving the long tail possibly then it's a kind of a excitement for us but if you are looking for the input side of it definitely it's a business call so i think 
if you define basis on when a small poc within your own data sets that what value it is bringing from this data source i think it can help a lot third and most important aspect let's say both are true so data source is also required and this is also required then definitely it's a fantastic business case why you are improving the business outcome so your customers are growing and once actually or let's say previously you can actually achieve the accuracy of your model by x percentage and this business outcome is coming by adding this actually the business value can be this much and that's where actually scale and growth can be possible running the ai models i think uh, we are having very limited options with us we cannot run much things on the on prem you have to look into the cloud side of it right so now actually you can devise different strategy with this when you want to achieve with this when you want to achieve certain time actually you can say have on demand kind of a infrastructure that can help a lot and on demand can infrastructure actually can well you can really really evaluate or hypothesis if the outcomes are favorable you can define go back to your technical team give me the right architecture how you want to run it what cost of it let's say running of the cost versus the business growth of the cost is different then you can take the decision further or very informed decisions i think these kind of decisions not only technology team can alone decide i think there are more stakeholders into the organization and certain calls if it is the investment for the growth of the future business then possibly you can define a kind of timeline why when actually business can hit that and inter intermediary you publish the reports that actually this is the trajectory is going on if the business is not moving in the right we have the right to actually ask we have invested so much if the business is not going do you really want to run these things actually just for the sake of running i think that's where we can have and last option is which is kind of a different thing altogether which i have seen i think do have some kind of a just not the cloud cloud journey just do have some infrastructure in your control as well i think cloud is very fantastic thing very fancy things but i will give a different connotation to certain people who are if it is some of you are coming from really really very sound technical backgrounds from the, from the beginning i'm sorry i'm using this word i think cloud is a fantastic thing somebody i think bajwa actually identified we used to work on something called black screen or the putty or the unix of the world right we used to ask for each and every resources right we used to deal with the deadlocks we used to deal with the kind of a high watermark situation we used to deal with the resources we used to deal with the fragmentation and so many different things all together when we used to create some instances we used to go with the check volumetric checklist what volume this can support and everything everything i think cloud is a phenomena where actually it solved the purpose for the non technical people it can create the instance like this but have we taken the right parameters right volumetrics while creating this i think there is a lot of wastages are there so if your pocs you can run in the control environment with your technical team ask for the right parameters and ask them have you benchmarked everything with again to the scale and those answers are there those are technical questions i'm not bring in those technical question in this discussion but i'm saying if you can ask these technical questions to technical team in a very very sanity manner i think moving from here to the cloud with the scale will not be that costly but i have seen there are a lot wastages in the cloud because the people have not taken the right technical decision right architectural decisions we used to define and document those in our non functional requirement documents nfrds we have used to document those thing very properly now people are really really reluctant they really don't know what questions are nfrd questions ask them to document for the cloud as well what kind of volumes you are looking for what kind of instance you are looking for what kind of storage you are looking for what is the retention period post it what you want to do it i think if we can do that thing around our data strategy because ultimately the kind of data you are playing with that's going to define the compute and other volumes right so i think those questions can help a lot so i think somewhere be a tough manager be a tough mentor be a tough architect being the cio or the cto but do wear certain time those kind of hats as well team will appreciate they will know actually they will be asked the tough questions so they will come when their homework is really really finished homework and i'm sure actually we can do wonders in all those areas as well and great mahendra ji uh, i think uh, that was lovely interacting with you we uh, if uh, it it was pleasure hosting you uh, we still have a, a few more question but in the interest of time i think we can take those questions uh, probably at a later stage 
thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your wonderful insights, experience, and uh, strategy on the on the on the role of AI and how it can improve uh, organizations' data strategy. You touched upon some very pertinent points. Uh, uh, having a collaborative mechanism, identifying right use cases, of course, and uh, having the right talent strategy along with many of those pertinent points. It was lovely hosting you, and thanks to all participants once again for sharing their valuable uh, inputs uh, and uh, attending uh, th this session on towards the end of the year. I know it's it's a it's a it's a tricky space to be in. Uh, most of you must be planning your vacations, so wishing you a very very. Uh, Happy New Year and Christmas in advance. And uh, once again, uh, thank you, Mahindraji. It was uh, lovely talking to you. Thank you, Jatinder. Thank you, Team CIO and Leader. And wishing everybody a fantastic New Year. And I'm wishing you all the very best in your AI journey. Be cautious, be adventurous, and be successful. Anytime you can reach out to me, I think you have my handle, you have my available details. And wishing you loads of successes in the New Year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Lovely having you. Thank you.